Hi, right, everybody. Hey, so welcome to the Glenn and Amber Schwarm uh, Real Estate of Mind show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber. Hey, everybody. So uh, we uh, help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing, as you know. And we have a very special guest on today who's an old friend. And so I want to introduce Mr. Dan Barrett from AdWords Nerds. How you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me. I was I was really pumped to get this invitation, so I'm I'm excited. So I got to tell everybody how we met. So yeah. we sign up for uh, Anthony Robbins Business Mastery event. It's quite the deal. It's you know five, I think, five days in West Palm Beach, Florida. But you don't get to go out much because no, it's like 90 hours a day, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. it was yeah, beautiful. it's roughly 90 hours a day. I think is what. This is. <laughs> Literally, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning until what, like midnight, one o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. You yeah. don't get to go to lunch. He passes out bar granola bars yeah. or like um, some sort of wraps whatever. or whatever. You do all, get to all, break for dinner, but all made by companies that he owns, which I found out later. He owns all the companies that make the food and stuff. So it's oh, all really like oh. for stuff that he, uh, yeah. Excellent. Nice. The funny Great. part is, so you have to uh, to set the scene. There's there's ten thousand people in a in a room, conference room, and we're packed. No tables. It's side by side people. Ten thousand people. I sit in the back row because they get pretty jumpy, and I just I'm not not usually my thing. I love all the excitement, but I kind of just sit back or whatever. Well, plus I was pregnant with Cruz. I was oh, pregnant yeah. with our little guy, so we sat oh, in the back. Oh, I forgot that. Thing. I didn't know if I was going to be uncomfortable sitting there for that long. And yeah. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden this guy sits next to me and now 10,000 people in there from all over the world, all different industries. And we're real estate investors. And so I say, Hey, I'm Glenn. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. He says, yeah, I'm Dan. I said, what do you do? Well, I help real estate investors <laughs> with online marketing. Really? <laughs> this is not a real estate conference. This is yeah, a yeah. business mastery conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah, it uh, it it was it's really surprising, and I think at that point too, the thing I remember about it was when I went to that thing, um, it was still really early for me in deciding to work with real estate investors. So I was kind of trying that on. It was sort of like a trial run, yeah. right? And I think yeah. the fact that we ended up sitting next to each other for me, I was like, well, that was probably a pretty good sign, like you know, because I think yeah. at the time I was still I was still figuring out if. Like, I literally didn't know. I was like, how many real estate investors are there in the world? Like five or 500? Like, I really didn't know. And so it was one of those things where I knew I wanted to, I always knew I wanted to specialize in something. And I was like, I'd much rather be like the best in the world at a very, very specific thing than be a generalist that, that nobody knows. And so I was start, I was like, you know, maybe it's this real estate investing thing because I was having a lot of success with it. And um yeah, I think sitting next to each other, we ended up being on the same team and everything. Yes, um, everything, yeah. Yeah, really, really kind of cemented that for me. So, yes, I have very, very fond memories of that. Uh, for well, sure. then then we had you speak. So so our very first Vestor Pro event, do you, you remember that, right? You came here. And yeah, spoke. that's right. I do remember that. Yes, that was our very first. And to, yeah. to date, we've never had anybody else come back and speak like you ever any events. We It became something that we did. But we um but that first event you came and spoke at that was the launching point that was the first we call it the main event back then but now we call it the home flipping workshop and that's what we've been traveling all around the country really doing it's not right now because the country shut no, down no that covid but. That, that business has been pretty much shut for a while so i don't know yeah. what's going to happen there but that's something we'll talk what, about so you mean that getting a bunch of people together in a room during the pandemic is not a good idea <laughs> i guess they frown on it yeah, it's a little no, that's weird. It's really odd. I don't know why they frowned on it. What's the big we deal? We got masks at the door, but What's you know. What's the big deal? <laughs> mask and full body condoms. Yeah. What's yeah. the problem? <laughs> yeah. But you used to put I mean, that first. Yeah. You, were, you, you were a big hit, and I remember because we talked about maybe providing sites for our students. And you were like, "Yeah, I don't really do that yet," but you were, but you were really helpful. And then you ended up building a couple websites for us. You built yeah. the Vestor Pro website, actually. Your team yeah. built that and built the signature home buyer site, which. We literally just converted a few months ago to another site. We had that for a long time. Yeah. And it was, um, um, but that was for many years we had that. Yeah. That, so that's been seven, no, Cruise is five. So about five years ago, yeah. right? Five years ago. Yeah. Is it, I mean, it feels like forever, man. It feels like literally a million, million years ago. And I remember it speaking at that event. It was one of the first times that I'd really spoken in front of in front of people as a business kind of thing, right? So yeah. I remember just being like, getting off stage and being like, I think I spoke at like three times the average speed of a human being. Like, I think it was just like, <laughs> you know, 
know, just like really like you get, you get the adrenaline rush and you just, you know, you sort of go off. But uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. And like I said, it really, it really, it, it, that really helped solidify me as investors are the only thing I do still to this day. All, all my clients are real estate investors. Um, and it's been, that was a fantastic choice. It was a, it was a great decision for us. And um, yeah. yeah, so it's, I, I'm very, very grateful that that ended up happening. And we had that kind of thing. And I actually went back to, not Business Mastery, in December, I went to, um, UPW? Uh, whatever. Um, it was the, um, the Power Within or? God, I don't even remember what it's called. But it was another like six day, it was like a full week and um, the, life, the life mastery or one of those yeah it wasn't life mastery i, I, know, I, you know, what, I know what you're talking about because I, I think i saw you post about it i, yeah. I can't think what it's called either but i think i remember you post how was it, that was that pretty awesome something about letting loose something that's inside you to for power I who think cares the, anyway. the power within or something like that right maybe uh, maybe that was it i really don't remember because that's the book but in that case, you know it's like anyway. I went in and i was like you know i've been to one of these before i get it but this one was like twice the size of the one that we were at and okay. i had the experience again where i was like i know they go late it'll be fun and the first night they went till they went from nine in the morning to 2 30 in the morning and i left they didn't they even finished i left at 2 30. i think they went oh. to like four in the morning <laughs> and every night for a week i was like they can't go that late every night and the answer is yes they can do that they will do that <laughs> and it is like this whole thing where I'm like, you know, it can't be a coincidence that like the process that you go through at a Tony Robbins event and the process that you go through as you are interrogated at Guantanamo Bay are like basically identical. It's like sleep <laughs> deprivation, loud music, you're hungry, like your blood sugar is so weird. And it's just like at the end of it, at the end of it, you, I came away from it being like, my life is going to be completely different. Everything has changed. And then like three days after I got home, I was like, what did we do at that thing? I can't remember. Like I have all these pieces of paper and I'm like writing notes. And it's like, you know, you've got to follow the wolf. And I'm like, what does that mean? I don't remember what any of this means. It was, uh, it was a wild experience. But I thought of you guys while I was there because I, I did not, I, like I met a, a lot of great people. And it's like one of those things where you always end up meeting people that you kind of share this connection sure. with. So. Yeah. yeah. It, was, uh, it, was, so it, was it was January of 2015 because I was pregnant with Cruz and it was Chastity's birthday yes. that we were yep. there. So I oh, remember oh, though yeah. what you're talking about. So late at night, there was one night, I think it was like four nights in or something. And you know, I'm pregnant, so my body's going through different things anyway. And mm -hmm. I remember having to go out to the car and take a nap because my like I was sitting in the room and like my body was vibrating. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just so exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's so but much. It, and they're like, it, hey, like, you know, why don't you? And this one, I think, in particular, was a little weird because it, they have people going around. And if you're not super into it, someone will slide up to you and be like, hey, like, uh, is everything all right? <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to, uh, I'll definitely like jump to the next song. And they're like, you know. <laughs> Here at this event, we really like to play all out. That's what they kept saying. Like, we like to play all out. I'm like, okay. Okay. All righty. <laughs> and then, you know, two days into it, you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, hilarious. Late, baby. you're hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, that, that, I've always got fond memories of that, too. Yeah. I, think, I think back to that. And, and, yeah, you take a ton of notes and you come back. And it's a lot. It's overwhelming. But I think that sometimes that stuff ingrains deep in you, though. Because yeah. yeah. you pull it out later when you or making a decision or thinking about something or you have a we a changed week. our business when we came back though we we came back from that be wanting to be owners instead of operators and that yeah. was probably the biggest takeaway we got from from that event i mean the information was just unbelievably yeah. timely and good and if yeah. you uh, it, it's the same thing that we all do in our lives though if you apply it you have to take action toward it yeah and yeah. you know some people do and some people don't so yeah. tell me what you do for real estate investors. So you, I know you're awesome. I've been watching your growth and it's been, it's been so awesome to watch you grow online and watch your podcast stuff. They're fun and great. And I, I've been, I don't say a lot. Every once in a while I'll come in here and there, but I'm always watching and I've, I've always, always you know, we had that bond. What's that? Yeah. The always negative comments. Yeah. I'm it's like, always, yeah. Guy. I'm always bad. I'm, the, I'm really I keep giving you bad reviews and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah just one star. I didn't like Can it. Can we actually kill those people and get away with it? The bad review people? Is that possible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't, a new law they're passing? It's legal. Yeah. So we do basically you can think about like we do basically any kind of online lead generation for motivated seller leads. That's what we do. So we primarily, you know, the company is called AdWords Nerds. We started with just Google ads. Um, and then, you know, we added Facebook ads to that. We added search engine optimization to that. We added Bing to that kind of slowly over time as the team grew and we're sort of, um, you know, pulling people in. And so it, it sort of became this thing where it was like, hey, if there's a way to get a lead, um, either to call you or get them on your website, email you, and we can do that online, that's what we're going to do, right? So that that's kind of been the focus of, of the agency. So, you're, you know, we're an agency, we kind of do everything for our clients. It's, it's kind of like this high touch thing. Um, and then a couple of years ago, we started coaching. So we started teaching. The model is basically, um, you know, the agency, because we're so focused and we're really, I don't know if we're the biggest agency in the space, but for a while we were really the only agency in the space. So kind of by default, we were the biggest. Um, and we're so focused on these kind of particular channels, this really particular type of lead. We just had a bunch of data about like, hey, what worked and what the price was in this market versus that market and, and stuff like that. So we use that data to kind of develop our own approach, which is very different from, you know, if you get someone who, much like I did, like when I got started with real estate investors, I was coming from doing ads, for example, for a plastic surgeon and an ambulance company and a pizza shop, right? So when you're doing ads for different kind of industries, there's kind of accepted best practices. That's what most people do, right? So that's what we yep. started with. But over time, um, we've just developed this process that's specifically for real estate investing, specifically for motivated sellers, because it just behaves very differently than other industries for whatever reason. So, you know, we developed all these kind of specific approaches. And so then we built off a coaching program on top of that, that basically is, hey, if you want to come in, you want to do this, but you don't want to pay an agency to do it either. You know, maybe you don't have the, the money to do, you know, both pay for the ads and pay for someone to do it, or you just want to learn it, or you want to train someone on your team to do it so you can do it in house. People come through the coaching program and then we teach them what we develop in the agency, right? So recently, a um, whole bunch of stuff changed in Google, partially because of all the COVID-19 stuff, right? It's it's sort of a kind of a weird situation there. So we saw that reflected in Google data before it really hit us in terms of like, you know, we were talking about this before the call or like our, you know, our town's getting locked down and all this stuff, right? So because that stuff changed in the Google data, the agency was able to test a bunch of different approaches to adapt to it. And we ended up changing the process that we do for our clients. Well, then I then took that and then taught it in the coaching program, right? So the coaching materials constantly get updated because Google's constantly changing, Facebook's constantly changing. It's never the same. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's definitely an evolving. Yeah, it's very fluid, yeah. very, fluid very fluid right fluid. now. Yeah, always. So, you know, for, for us, it's cool because the agency is really focused. It gets to be kind of the R and D lab, right? That develops the procedures and the and the stuff that we do. Um, you know, like we've got a full time web designer that just does uh, landing page design. We've got um, you know like a full time AdWords team, full time Bing and and Facebook team. We've got a full time SEO team, and so they're constantly testing and figuring out what works. And then I get to take that and teach it in the coaching program, right? So yeah. it's a it's a fun model. Um, it it kind of lends itself to what I want to do, which is just constantly test weird stuff and see what happens, right? So that's that's what I like. I wanted to ask you what made <clears throat> what made you pick real estate? You were you could have done you could have picked anything. Mm -hmm. I never asked you that question before. What made you pick real estate investors? Yeah, it was a combination of I I knew I wanted to focus on something, right? So it was kind of like I was looking around for an industry that I could specialize in, and um. My first ever real estate investor client was Dan Schwartz. It's a guy who now runs Investor Fuse, right? Yeah. At the time, he was just uh, he was wholesaling in Baltimore, and so he just found me online. Like I think I was on Elance or something, right? Just kind of testing it out, right? So, and um, he found me on there. We ended up working together. He was the one that explained to me. He's kind of uh, he's younger than me, but we we're relatively close in age. We both were in bands. We we really hit it off personally. We, we remain like really good friends. And so 
he's kind of walking me through this whole thing of where I was like, he's explaining to me what he does. And he's like, oh, okay, you know, I buy houses and, and we flip them, we sell them on the market. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And I think I said like, wow, you're like, you must have a lot of just like money in the bank. If you're just buying a bunch of houses, right? Because houses are expensive. <laughs> he's like, I remember this, this moment so specifically where he was like, oh, I don't use my own money. And I was like, what? what are you talking about right I, just thought, I, mean, I don't understand anything and I, yeah. I was like I think this is a scam I don't know if this is a real thing but a nice so we just did it and then um we, he got he, he got a bunch of deals from it we had a lot of success with it and so that kind of experience was there and so I was like well you know maybe this is a thing and when I started to look into real estate investing you know, it's it's a truism about the industry for sure that it's always about five to ten years behind in terms of online marketing, right? It's a little bit, it's it's less of the case now, but at the time, um, there was really only one or two people that were um, really prominently doing Google Ads for real estate investing at all, right? I think there was Sean Terry, Sean Terry. Um, and it deserves a lot of credit for being one of the first investors to to really promote Google Ads and say like this is how I'm getting my deals. Um, but at the time that was kind of it, and so there was nobody. Um, the thing that like appealed to me about it was there wasn't someone that I could go learn it from. I had to learn it myself by doing it, and because yeah. of that, I knew that there was going to be a barrier to entry for other people and that was going to make it a little harder to compete with me right so I'm like well, that's all i'm doing i get to know more about it than everybody else and um that's less the case today but it's still i mean kind of to me kind of shockingly the case right there's only a few people that really specialize in real estate investing for whatever reason i think it's a tough it can be tough it can be a little intimidating there's a lot there's big deal values getting thrown around yeah but um you know, the other thing I like about it is that you only need one deal to make your client a bunch of money, right? If you're right. selling $7 widgets online, I need to convert a, a yeah. thousand of those, right? If we're doing deals, you know, for, for the leads that we generate right now across our client base, it's around one lead out of every 10 becomes a deal under contract, right? So, and that's not include, that includes like terrible leads, it's just any lead, right? So anybody that fills out the form, anybody that calls, roughly one out of 10. Depends on the market, depends on the investor, all that stuff. But so for me, it's like- That's a, that's a good I, ratio. Yeah. That's a yeah, really good like, ratio. Yeah, it's like, I only need to get 10 leads, right? So it, it yeah. makes it, at least for me, like kind of more of a, I don't know, maybe it's more of an uh, an endorphin rush because you're like, you hit, you hit, and when you hit, you hit big, right? So yeah. You, um, Plus it's you met us. That, the, the, the best thing was meeting us, right? That was the best thing for you. I, You know, that was the key. And it's been gradually downhill ever since. And <laughs> I've never gotten it back. Like, I've been chasing that high. <laughs> I understand. It's tough. We set the bar kind of high with that kind of stuff. I can't. <laughs> this is a bunch of drug-addicted people, like, in your wake, like, <sighs> But you bring up an interesting point, you know, rather than be a jack of all trade and a master of none, you pick the niche yeah. to go into. And that's what we tell our students, you know, because there's so many people that are interested in becoming real estate investors, but you go online and it's just like this never ending plethora of information. And there's just all these little rabbit trails that you can go into. And we tell them, you know, find the one area that you want to focus on in real estate and just get educated on that rather yeah. than, you know, trying to chase all these different rabbits. What do you see as the future? Like not, not, not what you see as the future, but what do you, what have you seen change in this ridiculously <laughs> fast changing world right now from an online marketing, you know, we're seeing markets. Like, I think I'm not sure we're seeing, we've seen what's going to really happen for a few months as far as us. I wonder what you think from the marketing side, if you're, what you're noticing from, response rates and people and ads everything what do you what are you seeing on your in your from your vantage point yeah i mean it's been interesting right because you kind of have to put it in context of the previous five years right in terms of online lead prices for this type of lead so i would say like you gotta imagine like it's the person that types in sell my house fast right that's that's our our person right so the cost to acquire that person as a lead online has been a very very steady incline right so um i think i i did the math once and i think it was like from 2012 to now 
essentially the the uh, cost per lead increased. I think it was 24 times over that time period. Really? Which I, think I, I did the math and I, I was like at the time I was like it's the equivalent of gas being $64 a gallon, right? It's like just really really high, right? So. Wow. And, you know, it, what that's done is it's sort of driven this approach where, um, you know, I would say like when when competition increases and, and, and supply declines, right, prices go up and the marginal utility of every lead skyrockets, which basically means it's like there aren't a lot of leads to go around. So you need to close every lead you can close. And so that's driven this approach to both marketing and in, in like exit strategy, where it's really about flexibility. It's about, can I get as many leads as possible, the lowest possible cost, but I need to follow up and I need to call them five minutes after they contact me, no matter what. And I need to have, um, you know, an approach to closing that deal where, okay, if this doesn't work for you, we can do something else. If this doesn't work for you, this can do, we can do yes. something else, right? Yes. Because again, it's like, even if you do, you know, I was always saying like, you know, even if you have some way, let's say you, you invented some way of closing a lead where it's only 2% of your leads ever close this way and you only ever make a thousand bucks, right? So in, in relation to real estate deals, it's not a lot, but in relation to, hey, that thousand dollars now subsidizes the cost you apply, you, you're you using to get all your other leads, your overall cost per deal acquisition comes way down, your ROI goes up, yada, yada, right? So it's there's been this kind of approach where, we're trying to be as flexible as possible. We're trying to close as much as possible, follow up as much as possible, follow up in multiple channels. Now, since the whole COVID-19 thing, that's the first time that that sort of path has been interrupted, right? So essentially what happens is uh, prices are actually down for online leads for the first time in forever, right? And if you look at kind of like the, the actual behavior of the data, what you see is there are way more people searching. So there are way more people online, right? Everybody's home. People are, you know, looking around the house and being like, you know, maybe I don't like this place or they're looking around and saying, I don't know what's going to happen with my job. Maybe I, I need to move. I need to downsize or whatever. So there's a lot of thinking going on, right? So there's way more supply. At the same time, I think a lot of investors withdrew money from the market. So, you know, generally, like as human beings, right, when we're in a situation where we think we might be in danger, it's the the immediate kind of response is you freeze up and you hold real still, right? Like I was, it's like, I would say like, I am a 40 year old man. Still to this day, I'll walk down, like I'll have to walk down to the, the basement to get something, you know, it's a finished basement. Like the kids homeschool down there now, right? It's nice, there's toys and stuff. As so you go down there, like grab something and I'm coming up and I'll switch off the lights. And it's like, there's a moment at which I'm like, something's gonna kill me down here. There's something behind me right now. And I, you do the thing where you like run up the steps, you know, I take the steps like five at a time. So, you know, if I'm down in that basement and I turn off the lights and all of a sudden I hear like, you know, like that. I'm going to freeze up because I'm like, what happened? You know, like, you know, so it, it's the same thing in like the marketplace where it's like we have all this uncertainty. We have all this kind of perceived risk. Um, not saying it's not real, but I'm saying that's that's what people perceive is going on. Right. It's a risky time. So what do people do? Sure. They freeze up. They withdraw cash. They want to sit on it so that they have it as like a warm blanket. Right. They're like, OK, I have X amount of dollars in the bank. The problem is with that approach, right, is that. Well, you're not filling your pipeline. So if you are worried you're not going to have deals in three months, if you're not doing any marketing now, you won't, right? I mean, that's just how it works. You're going to close the deals that you have in your current pipeline, and then there's not going to be anything behind those. But in any case, some people withdraw money from the market. Supply of searches go up because, again, people are thinking. They're home. They're, like, thinking about what's going on. So that's brought prices down, right? So prices sort of dropped out of that marketplace. Um but conversions are also down. So conversion is like anytime someone opts in to become a lead. So they call or the email. And so conversions are down, I think, because if you are in this situation, right, where you're at home and you're nervous and you're thinking and you're not sure what's going on and you land on a website and it's like we buy houses and it just looks like exactly like that website looked three weeks ago, right? It's just kind of like, oh, I don't know. So what we kind of see is like people spending like four or five minutes on the website and then bouncing off, right? So to me, what that means is like, 
there is a huge amount of room for investors to say, and actually you guys, I've seen some of your stuff and you guys did a really good job of this, of acknowledging the situation and answering objections before they come up, right? So when this whole thing started happening, we first got into the lockdown, it, it, it really kind of hit for the first time, right? My wife and I had this conversation where we're like, hey, like, how safe are we? Like, what's going on, right? And I was saying like, you know, Basically, I could run my entire business myself if I really needed to, right? I don't want to because I'm yeah. lazy. I staff my business so I don't have to do anything, but I could. So I'm like, I'm not really worried about my income per se, right? It's more about, I want to protect the people that work for me, right? And so we're talking about ways to do that. And, you know, we're having this conversation. And my wife said, you know, worst case scenario, if we had to sell the house, we could just downsize into an apartment. That's not that's not the end of the world. We could do that, right? We'd be fine. And um, and I said, yeah, I was like, hey, we could sell a house to a real estate investor, right? Because, hey, I know some, right? I know a couple of real estate investors are going to be fine. <laughs> you know a couple of them, right? <laughs> and, yeah. And her first response, it really, this really, really stuck with me. Her immediate response was, well, I wouldn't want anybody to come over the house. That's the first thing she thought of, right? Because she's disinfecting our groceries in the garage, right? We wash our hands yeah. like we are in a surgical room. Like, so the idea yeah. of someone coming over and like, taking picture, walking all around the house, it creeped her out, right? And so it, 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 there's so many investors now are doing things like, hey, we'll do this all virtually. You can take the pictures. I can make an offer over the phone. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. But you have to say that on the website because that's already in people's heads before they land there, right? So that's what they're looking for. Yeah. So it, I think there's, yeah. there's a lot of room to um, make a lot of progress at this point. I think it's just... Yeah, so you, we were talking about how everything's constantly changing. You've got to adapt to the market as it is. You can't just pretend that the market is the way it was six months ago. It is, right? So, you know, I talked to um, uh, a, a really a good investor out in Phoenix. And he was saying, yeah, we, he's like, yeah, we did like 15 deals this month. And I was like, cool, like, how'd you do it? And he's like, basically, we just, you know, say every time that we talk to somebody, like, yes, we are still buying houses. Of course, like we've got to account for the current situation in our offers because who knows what's going to happen, but we're definitely still buying houses and we do it all virtually. And it's like, that's the whole pitch. I mean, you know, it's not the whole pitch, but that's the, that's the essence of it. And I think that yeah. captures that moment really powerfully, right? Is that going to be the case six yeah. months from now? Probably not, but who knows? Right. As from a marketing perspective, what would be your advice for investors to do right now and not only right now like in the moment but also to prepare for when this is over yeah so in the i think there there's slightly different things they're they're connected but slightly different things right in the moment you know my primary thing is you know there's there's risk to doing something new in the best of times right you have to not only dedicate capital and time and stuff to something that you're not super sure of, but you also take on the opportunity cost of like, if I'm doing that, I'm not doing what I was doing before, I'm doing less of it, or maybe I'm not putting as much budget to it as possible. So I'm not gonna necessarily say, everybody needs to run out and do online marketing, even though that's what I do, right? It's the kind of thing where I'm like, there's an opportunity there, there's lots of opportunities everywhere, right? And it's more about understanding What's your risk tolerance? What's your market look like? What do you like to do? Are you the kind of person that likes to do that kind of marketing? Or do you, like I literally talked to someone the other day who's is in my coaching program and he's like, I hate turning on the computer. I hate it. I hate looking at the computer. And I'm like, why are you in this class, right? And he's just like, well, I know I need to, I know I need to do online marketing. I'm like, you don't need to do anything. Who told you you needed to do this? I mean, you don't, right? But there's an opportunity there. There's a lot of opportunities, right? So the core of it that I always tell people right now is you can you can cut the fat and you can save, you know, you can be as efficient as possible. But the last thing I would turn off is marketing. And the yes. I, I would say like, you know, there's um you know the uh, Nassim Taleb who wrote uh, Anti Fragile and Skin in the Game and all the a lot of great stuff, right? He always says like. Um, I don't want to hear your investment advice. I want to look at your portfolio, right? So it's like, what do you do with your money? Don't tell me what you think I should do. What did you do with your money, right? And so I would say like, if you look at my marketing spend, I'm spending more on marketing now. 
because I'm worried that in three months, you said like maybe there's kind of like a tail to this that's going to hit us all in the face. Yeah. I think oh, there will be. Yeah. So it's like I want to fill my pipeline for three months for in the future, and I need to do that now. I don't need to do that then because there's a sales cycle for me, just like there's a sales cycle for closing a deal, right? So I'm thinking about three months from now, what will I wish I did, right? And so, you know, I'll cut, I probably cut $20,000 from my monthly expenses, right? Over the last week. And I gotta say like, that was like a painful process. It's a painful process. Yeah. Like I cut stuff, like I cut coffee uh, for me, right? Like stuff that I love that costs like $10 a month. I'm like, cut it. You know, like I was trying to cut it and make as much space as possible. But yeah. My marketing, I was like, let's put more money in market, right? The money goes in market. The money, yeah. the money goes in keeping the team safe. The money goes to stuff that benefits the clients directly, so it produces revenue for clients, and the money goes to market. Everything else, I can kind of make do with that, right? At least for a little while. So that's kind of the short term. The long yeah. term is, and I think we were in the middle of this process before all this happened, but I think this, the whole COVID-19 thing, the whole pandemic thing, it is going to accelerate this a lot and um i've talked about this like on my podcast and stuff but i think i did like a four episode series on it because it's something that's like i really really believe in but to like summarize if you think about what real estate investor marketing has been for the last 50 years right it has been a postcard that says what you do i buy houses i'll buy your house I'll give you cash, I'll do your paperwork. It's literally just a description of the pitch, right? It's like, here's why you would wanna yep. work for me. Very I, true. Right? And if you look it's at like every thing. investor, right? Every investor's brand is, I buy houses, the town I'm in. Dave buy houses, Doug buys houses, Frank buys houses, Fran buys houses. It's like, you know, we all kind of live in this world where investors are largely homogenous. We just all look identical and we do identical stuff, right? But if you look at like real estate agents, right? What happened to real estate agents? Well, real estate agents, their pitch used to be, I'm the MLS. I have a book, like literally a physical book. A book I'm yeah, the one who knows what book. houses are gonna cost. You know, you have yeah. to come to me to get the information, right? But then what happened? Zillow, Trulia, those companies came in and they, they took that and they put it online and they ate real estate agents lunch, right? And so yeah. real estate agent has always been a relationship business, but now more than anything, it's like you have to be kind of a local celebrity. You have to be like the person that people know, the people that the person that people refer to, the person that you're like, oh yeah, like uh, you know, she sold my house and she was great. You should work with her, right? And so you see this kind of huge rise of agent the individual real estate agent as a brand i have a youtube channel i do a local newsletter i have a website i have an email news list like they're doing the work right every single industry has been going through that for over a decade right it's been the internet comes in they disrupt the industry and all of a sudden it has to be the only reason you're going to work with me versus giant website down the block is that you know like and trust me and i'm local and i'm i'm we have a relationship of some kind right could yeah. just online but we have some kind of relationship investors haven't done any of that there's like it's like you guys and like two other people right so it's like the, <laughs> the, the the there's this shift towards look um like zillow truly actually zillow truly opened or they all stopped making offers when the pandemic hit right they yes. pulled out of that entire market because they were like mm, right same thing hold on to the cash and there's a hole there there's a, a vacuum that's left over from that and my question is always like who's going to step into it it's not going to be some giant company you have to step into your local market and say i'm going to be more than just the postcard with the anonymous name that's going to tell you exactly what i do because there's so many other investors there's so much competition there's large-scale silicon valley venture funded competition all the way down to mom and pop investors are more of them than ever before. So the question is like, why do I work with you? And it's the same answer for investors that it was for agents, that it was for like pizza places, that it was for every other industry where this happened. It's I'm gonna work with you because before I needed you, you helped me for no good reason, 
right? I saw you online, you gave me a bunch of information. You educated me on what I needed. You were the one that told me about this. You were the one that told me about that. I've been following you. It's just like happening in my business now. So we, we've been doing this for four years now where it's like, we, we have a Facebook group, we have a podcast, we have a blog. I put out so much material with no call to action whatsoever, nothing, right? It's like never any call to action. There's like one on my podcast, once an episode and that's it. And I get people now that become clients that are like, I've been on your newsletter, I've been on your email list for three years and now I'm ready, right? So if all I did was pitch that person three years ago, they'd be like, nah, and they'd bounce, right? So yeah. it, it's that, it's that kind of long-term thinking of how do I become not just an investor, how do I become an authority in my local marketplace and actually have an effect beyond just saying, sell me your house, right? And the whole yeah. pandemic thing is it's an opportunity to lead that it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to lead, right? You could just step into that. Yeah. And there are people who are like, I don't know what's gonna happen to my house. I don't know what's gonna happen to foreclosures. I don't know what's happening with marketing. I, I was telling the story where my um, social media feeds are like half people that know me primarily from music and half people that know me primarily from business. So real estate investors. All the people in the music, uh, the music side of my social media feed are like, we should stage a rent strike. I'm not paying any rent. I don't, I'm not getting paid. I'm not gonna pay rent. And they're literally organizing and like, here's how you do it and blah, 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 blah. And then my real estate investor feed are all people like, what do I do if people don't pay their rent? Oh. Yeah, and I'm right. like, yeah, no. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. So stuff. So you can step into either one of those spaces, right? And be like, here's the deal. Here's what I see is happening. Here's what's happening right. to me. Here's what this means. Like, educate people, and people remember that stuff. They remember it for a really long. To your time. point, to your point, Dana, though, about like being well known in your area and in your industry. Maybe about three months ago, I'm walking out of the grocery store. I'm pushing my cart. And a guy is walking by me and he goes, um, signature home buyer, you know, like he started singing the jingle or whatever. And he goes, he goes, I might call you in a few years when I'm ready to sell. But had we not been on, you know, had our TV yeah. commercials and on Facebook and all of that, he would never know to call us in a few years when he's ready to get yeah. out of New York. I tell you, man, I, I took down a ton of notes while you were talking. And I uh I love I the first one I put down was you get one deal per ten leads. And I think that's that's a you know, for internet marketing, that's exceptional rate. I mean, I think we're one for twenty ish. Yeah. So we'll have, to, we'll have to have a conversation about that because one for 10 is definitely good. That's a good thing. And <clears throat> when you talked about having multiple exit strategies to, to be able to capitalize on every lead that comes in, literally, no lie, this morning, 11 o'clock, I had that with my director of sales and we actually increased several methods because we've been able to just sell houses. It's been okay for a while, but we haven't had to dig in a little bit deeper. And yeah. so when you talked about that, I was laughing thinking, Literally, I had a 90-minute meeting about that this morning with notes and action actionable items. So as you're talking, I'm thinking, wow, you're just you're preaching, you're singing my song. And yeah. then um, doubling down on marketing, that was a good one. Just you know that you're just you're going all in with marketing, which we are too. Yeah, we we certainly had the conversation when all this started, though. Should we stop our marketing? And we decided not to. Yeah, right. we decided that was not what we want to do now because I hadn't thought of it the way you put this. But when you said that the like eye buyers and stuff step out, that leaves a vacuum. Yeah. You're right. That leaves it. That's that's the opportunity. That, I didn't think of it like that till you said that. That's the opportunity that investors can step in and say, "Listen, for a while, they're not going to be here. So listen, let's jump in." And we don't really compete too much in our area, but I know people around the country do. Yeah. And that's a great. It's a great time to step in and take action to to, like you said, the last part of that is to build that relationship. Yeah. I still think the i buyers will always lose out to uh, the relationship buy all the time. You know, if yeah. they know and feel comfortable with you, you know, like and trust, right? But his point about um, filling the pipeline too, right now things are, you know, things are still closing and everything else. So people might not feel that cash crunch right now, but that's a conversation even way before COVID started that we have with our salespeople is, you know, yeah, you're, you know, it's it's kind of that, um, that artist thing that, that they say you're either really rich or really poor. I can't think of the saying right now, but yeah. Um, rags or riches you know sometimes they'll stop working when they have a lot of closings coming in but then next thing you know they're dead broke because they haven't filled their pipeline so that's a right. conversation we have with our salespeople a lot is making sure that you always have that next deal ready so if you're not filling your pipeline right now you know two three months from now you're going to be hurting yeah so awesome awesome stuff brother that was great tell everybody how they can find you how can they find you 
Yeah, so the easiest place is just go to AdwordsNerds.com, which is A-D-W-O-R-D-S Nerds.com. Uh, you can find me there. But I also have a podcast called the REI Marketing Nerds Podcast, uh, which is also a Facebook group. So if you search basically REI Marketing Nerds or AdWords Nerds pretty much anywhere, uh, you'll find us. But yeah, AdwordsNerds.com is the website. It's the easiest place to uh, get in touch. Well, I think, I mean, I think you proved today how much value you give everybody. I hope people take, take, uh, hope they listen to it and remember all the stuff you just said. It was powerful. I'm glad we met that was six years ago, whatever yeah. it was, man. I'm really yeah, glad man. we sat by each other. And, and then I yeah. find out we're both in the collective genius together. We joined that. And I'm like, hey, Dan's a member of this group. I didn't know that. So <laughs> thanks for inviting we, me, yeah. Dan. We, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, we joined that last year. Somebody left and they, they only have like two spots for internet people. So that we got invited okay. in. So we like, yeah, slid right in there. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, now I gotta figure out how to do that meeting virtually and all that right. stuff too, right? So crazy. I know. Yeah. That, well, well, I'll be looking forward to actually like meeting you guys in person, like going to an event and seeing you guys there. Yeah. So we'll yeah. have to, I'm gonna try to make it so that we go at the same time and we overlap. That'd be that'd be that'd be awesome. Well, brother, I appreciate you being here, man. I know you got a lot going on. We're all you know, we're all trying to figure our way through all this stuff. So awesome stuff today. Appreciate you, man, and uh, keep grinding out there. Yep. Thanks for sharing yeah. everything. Yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.